Hi everybody, here we are, my name's Colwyn, we're back at my workshop. Um, I've got uh, a little friend with me here, and we had a request for um, Shelby to make an appearance in front of the camera, so I thought before we carry on, let, uh, let's let Shelby say hello. He's not going to stay in my arms for very long though, so I've got Charlie here to take him, take him from me, because he's a bit of a lump, he's been eating far too many mince pies recently. <laughs> so um, Charlie, can you just come and grab him, that's another chance to see Charlie before we end our last session in my workshop for the year. So, oh, there we are. Take them away, lovely. Nice one, guys. So this is quite a sad moment actually. It's a bit of a bittersweet moment. This is the last live demo that we've got um, in my workshop. But a good um, set of demos coming up and throughout the uh, next year, we've got uh, um, uh, four demonstrators, four different uh, workshops with lots of camera angles. So we're gonna treat you with a load of tech and things like that. That'll be starting um, uh, in the new year, around about the 12th, that sort of thing. So, um, I thought we'd have a little festive session um, today, as being the last one. And we've got one of our future um, regular demonstrators here. You've seen him already on videos, Ben the Pen Bellows. Um, he'll be doing everything crafty and pyography and pen turning and all that sort of stuff. Because it's festive, I've got my festive nutcracker jumper on, so I thought I'd show you everything festive today. Look, we've got our nutcracker jumper. And for half time, I've got me and Ben a little treat. We've got some mince pies. We're gonna have a half time treat once we've done the body of our snowman. So let's show you what the, uh, what the project's gonna be, I suppose. So here we are, here's the, here's the project. This is a little, little table centerpiece, I guess, really. We've got, um, on this one, this is probably one of the most expensive snowmen that I've made. We've got a boxwood body. We've got ebony um, coal buttons and features. We've got a blackwood hat and we've got a pink ivory wood nose. We're gonna go a little bit um, economy on the timbers this time. But there, that's today's project. So, so there we are, there's our project. So let's start off, I have a piece of sycamore here nice bit of sycamore and all I'm going to do is rough this down. This is going to be the body. So what centers are we going to use? We're going to use um, ProDrive. Ben, do you want to come in a little bit closer? So I'm going to use a, a fairly small ProDrive, a 16 mil ProDrive there. And we're just going to turn between centers. Let me just hook that up. This is a beautiful piece of sycamore. You've got some really nice markings running down through it. But I think we need a bigger tool rest than that. Unfortunately, I don't have an in-between size of tool rest, so what we're gonna do is go about 300 mil, about 12 inches. Okay. Obviously, I've got my glasses on. We're gonna rough that down with the roughing gouge first. Get the light in there a little bit. So here we go. So lay speed to zero to start with. And I'm going to be turning this at around about sort of 16 to 1800 revs. There we are. Rough and gouge. cylinder there I'll stop the label and show you at the moment it's a little bit too big okay a little bit too big in diameter so we're just going to take a skim off of that I've got a question here for you Carl Wim no um, with your airbrush spraying do you thin your stains or paints and no. if yes with what ration no no now that is it's a really, really good question. For, in terms of spirit stains, no. For airbrush paints, you can, yes. Um, there, look online, if you look up um, viscosity test for airbrushing, and that'll give you a simple test to do um, to get you to the right viscosity. Um, and it'll depend, some, some are ready um, thinned. Um, also, if you're um, using um, airbrush paints that have a glitter in, uh, 
you know, then you might have to go for a higher pressure, a bigger nozzle, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, viscosity test, um, and uh, that will tell you exactly the right viscosity for <laughs> your paints. But no, spirit stains, I use the chestnut ones, basically straight out the tin, straight in the airbrushes, and away you go. So I'm just going to do a little skew cut with a bowl gouge, just to tidy up that top surface. Now we can't do a snowman without getting one of the Coleman signature skews, obviously. So we're going to go with a large 32mm signature skew, and we're going to do a little V-cut. Now I have done this demonstration in a much smaller scale for you before, and the process is exactly the same. So we're doing our first feed, then we're going to rough this down a little bit. <laughs> and then we'll do another V. I've got another question for you, Carl Yeah. And this includes me. Is it true that we that we wore the same shirt on our daily deals? That we shared the shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether it's a good point to make or whether or not really, but they're actually our own shirts um, that we were encouraged to wear. <laughs> but we didn't share, did we? We didn't share. <laughs> We're close, but... There we are, so that's the that's the bones of it. We're just gonna do another little skew cut with the bowl gouge. Top and right on the uh, head as well. And then we're gonna start rolling these overs. Now, they're big beads. If you wanna do them with the skew, you can. If you want to do it with a spindle gouge, you can. If you want to do it with a bowl gouge, you can. It, it basically is up to you. I'm going to do a mixture. And I'm going to do the big one first here. We're going to start with a spindle. Spindle gouge. And that was your own skew you used? It was? Yep. A Colwyn Way skew. Always, thank you, Ben. The common way signature skew, yes. The idea is, I'm, I want to make the finish as good as possible. Just save so much work from abrasive. This end here will tidy up. Um, the top's going to be covered by a hat anyway. So I'm going to leave a little bit of flat. We're going to have a little fixing from a a six mil piece of dowel. There we are. Now let's go to something a little bit different for the top one. That's small enough now. I'm going to start using a beading and parting tool. So this is very much like a skew. I'm going to use the corner to roll that bead over. Same on the top. There we go. And then just to add a little bit of detail, let's put the skew tip right to the bottom of the bead. It just makes those beads pop a little bit. There we are. So now we're going to go quiet for a while. Um, let's pop my tools down a second. I'm going to go quiet for a while because I'm going to have the dust extraction on. But before we do that, we'll stop the lathe just to show you what we've got. Um, with a lovely bit of timber, I have to say, it's really, really pretty. Put the dust extraction on. I'm going to sand down through from 100 grit to 150, 240, 400, 600. 
And then I'm going to use um, a friction polish on this one. Here we are, friction polish. This particular one is the chestnut friction polish. Um, and that's just, just a nice, easy finish to use. So we're going to use Sicky Sycamore for the body. I've got some lovely dark walnut for the hat. And we've got some, um, some Panga Panga and some Paduk for the other features. We'll go over that one. I'll show you in a minute. So here we are. I'm going to go dark. Well, not dark, but I'm going to go quiet whilst I sand. I am going to shout at Ben in terms of talking. So you might get a little bit of what I'm saying. And Ben's going to shout questions if we have any. Yep. Did you make a, a sanding disc? What, what wood did you use to make your sanding disc with? Sanding disc was made out of MDF, but you can use, no sorry, yes MDF, but you can use plywood as well. Okay, so we've got the faceplate ring on the back, we've got the Velcro hook. Okay, which I'm using here, I'm using 100mm wide by a metre long, and I'm just, it's just in strips. So, um, uh, and I can sort of make whatever size disc I want to fit the um, sandy disc I buy. Okay, so we'll start sanding. So, 100 grit first. So, 100 grit first. And I'm getting that paper right the way down in there. Now, the 100 grit is going to do most of the work, and then all the, the following abrasives just take out your previous sanding mark, basically. Keep the paper moving. If you keep the paper in one place too long, you'll end up with deep scores. So keep it moving. So I've got Ricky, he's having a couple of troubles with his skew. Um, he's still having trouble with catches when he's using the heel on rolling over. Um, but seems to be okay with the tip. Should he be doing this? So two things um, you're doing not quite right there. Um, first of all, to start with, when you're using the skew, use the heel point to make sure that point is engaged. So you're actually following a little burr line. Uh, and secondly, don't kick your handle out too far. Try and keep your handle in line with the cut that you're making. That'll really help. I keep talking about um, camera angles and new equipment and things like that, but in the new year, we'll be able to focus really on tool um, use um, and get these camera angles really close in. Um, so there will be uh, many opportunities in the new year to start looking at tool use. And then what's the setup for your sandpaper? I'm not sure, does that mean how it goes through the grades? It just says, um, what's your setup for your sandpaper? Okay, so the, um, the abrasive is RB406. It's a Hermes product. It's, um, it's nickname is the ultimate abrasive. Um, the grit sizes I'm using are ranging from 100 going to 150, 240, 400, and because this is Sycamore, I'm going to need to add in another one, so we're going to go 600 after that. So all the hard work's done now with the 150. Stop and show you where we are before we move on to 240. Look at them, lovely marks. 240. So 400. 
this is by far the, the lengthiest section for sanding. Don't worry, they're all not going to take this long. Also, whilst, whilst we're sanding a minute, um, again, we'll start talking about next year's videos and things like that. I've asked if you can send in ideas of what you'd like to see turned and, um, and, and spoken about. But it's not just about me, it's about other things as well. So hand saw use, pyrography, pen making, routing, all those sorts of questions we can answer. We've got four demonstrators they all have their own discipline, so just anything you can think of that's troubling you at the moment, woodworking-wise, <laughs> we're not marriage counsellors or anything like that, um, woodworking-wise then just uh, feed in the questions. Lily is normally there, as you know Lily's on her, on her holes for the moment, but Tom's taking any suggestions and is back at head office waiting to pounce with part numbers and things like that. So. There we are, 600. Let's stop and have a look. I'll turn the, I'll turn the extractor off just for the moment. Now, there we are. What a wonderful bit of timber. Let's get a bit of finish on there. We'll start with our friction polish. And, um, stay put hose. It's pretty good normally. A little bit of tissue. There we are. Oh, ben, you've had your mince pie already. We were going to share those at half time. Oh well. So I'm going to before we start buffing this, I, I like to apply it without the lathe running, and then we'll put the lathe on. You're on your German smokers. Mm -hmm. Is it better to have more holes or make holes larger to keep the cones burning better? Um, so you want two um, flue holes in the bottom and make them about 8 mil each. Um, also, you've got that air coming up. You need air to escape. So the hole for the, the mouth, again, about the same sort of size, about 8 mil. That should work. And make sure this, the incense cone is actually... Um, sort of smoking and burning well before you put the lid back on. There we are, a little bit of friction now just to get that sheen. It's one of the quickest finishes out there. Really nice. If you're just beginning your turning journey, friction polish is a really, really nice thing um, to start you off in terms of finish. It, you know, it's dry straight away and we can carry on now. Um, so that works a treat. So there we are. That's that's the body done. Ben, if you like to just pan back for a minute, we're going to look mm -hmm. at what we're going to do next. All right. So there we are. So that's the body made. So you can see where we're signed. This is a nice stable platform. Um, our next job is to start thinking about making the hat. Um, and I'm just going to go over some of the timbers that we're going to use. So if I pop that one just to one side back here, I need to keep it at hand because I'm going to make the hat fit. So this is pretty much like the smokers that we were doing the other day, um, where that hat needs to, to bed over the head. So a lovely bit of walnut. This particular uh, walnut is, um, is, is a UK uh, walnut, so it's a nice dark old tree, this one. But that's going to be the hat. Now, a couple of timbers you may not have heard of. These are sort of semi-exotics. That one's called Panga Panga. Um, it's a really dark chocolatey brown. Now anything dark, or you can even dye, um, dye the, the pieces to make things like the buttons, the bits of coal, that sort of stuff. Um, and then for the nose, I want something a bit red, a bit orangey. So I'm using some Paloop, beautiful timber, that one. And these are some old bobbin blanks that I've got. Or any, any of your offcuts will do exactly the same. So that's that's for later on, that's for the features. So we're going to start by just roughing this down to the centre, or to around, sorry. I've already centred them up, like that before we got here. Don, why didn't you use a sanding sealer on that? 
Um, the, because the, you can, but because the friction polish is shellac based, it's for me, it al almost works like um, a spirit sanding sealer, which is pretty much the same. It just doesn't have as much of the um, carnauba wax in it. It's the carnauba wax introduced into the sand, into the friction polish that gives you that high shine. So when I'm using friction polish, I, I very rarely use a sanding sealer. Another way I can go back to a small tool rest now. I do prefer the small tool rest, less clumsy, less in the way. Um, so back to our small tool rest. And just this point, I'm just going to rough down. So Ben, if you want to come in close again, um, we're going to rough down first. Where's the skew? Where's the skew? I'll find the skew in a minute. Um, so we rough down first. And, and all I'm doing here is just the process to, to hold this in the chuck. So rough down, then I'm going to just size my C jaws. I'm doing that off camera just a minute. Um, and use a beading and parting tool. And I'm going to create a little... Oops. Oh, that's enough. So that's the same size as my C jaws now. Tidy up the ends. Right, now that's ready for our chuck. So we can change things around a little bit. I'm going to move my mince pie. That's mine because Ben's had his. When you're painting wood with an aerosol, would you recommend using a sanding sealer on it first? Yeah, yeah. If you're using aerosols, definitely, um, because what happens that first, the first time you go with a spray, the grain, the nap of the grain will rise, and so you'll have to always sand back. But the sanding sealer is like your first, your first coat of, 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 of finish. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, sanding sealer, and then. A little light sand with a very fine abrasive at slow speed, and then you can start um, spraying. You still might have to very gently de nib after you've done some spraying as well, so you know, be prepared for that. Okay, so we're just going to move the tail stop there for the moment. I'm going to clean this section up, and then the hat's going to be that way around, so we will flip him back and just tidy him up as well. So I'm going to keep that out the way. Okay, right. Something's not quite right here. Anyway, small bowl gouge. Just doing some nice little skew cuts just to tidy that finish up. There we are, we're gonna now face off. Move the tail stop just for the minute. You didn't like your, beat, your mince pie then, Ben? Lovely. Oh. <laughs> I've got a question here from Helen. Um, she keeps trying to prepare a wood like you've just shown, but often, even after truing up, it isn't straight in the chuck. What's she doing wrong? Not doing anything wrong. Um, all I would say there is, you think about the chuck that we're holding. If we held a piece of metal in there, it'll be dead true every time. We're not there, we're holding a um, a very soft material as in timber and so what happens you have even here we have side and end grain so if you think that the grains running that way so it's like a, a ream of paper um, the flat side of the paper here is soft but this is hard so what always happens the harder you um, uh, contract the, the chuck 
uh, the more um, you're going to put that bit of timber out because it's not a stable bit of material, it's timber. So you, it's just a case of tapping. Um, if you Certainly if you're doing a bowl, that sort of thing, you pinch up, make sure you've got it held in there um, nice and true, tap it true, then tighten up properly. That's all it is. It's not you, it is literally just, it's just the material. So let's have a look and see where we are in terms of size and the head of our snowman. I think a little bit more, and we'll do that with the the flat of my little box scraper here. So it's just a square edged scraper. And I'm going to use that little flat there in a minute to hold. Now that's better. We can have a nice little angle on the hat. Okay, so let's just do a couple of bits of preparation before. We swap that round into my other chuck. There we are. And the bits of preparation I'm talking about, literally taking away some of the waste. clean this up so I'm gonna take we're gonna go for another skew <laughs> be careful not to go too far of course otherwise the rim will come off there we are, that should be enough. Um, bowl gouge, where did my bowl gouge go? Um, okay. Uh, go another parting tool, just to flatten off. Just keeping an eye, I don't want to lose the rim. Let's see how that looks on our, our snowman. That's going to be all right, actually. I'm not surprised at all, of course. Parting tool I need. I'm losing my tools today. Sorry. You know me. You've seen me turn before. You know I'm always missing stuff. So, just, I'm not going to part all the way off. I nearly parted all the way off then. Sorry. Distracted. A little bit of sanding. So, dust extraction on, just very briefly. Watch the colour of this wall that come out now, it's going to be 
So we've got this area here now just to tidy up but that's so far that's our, our snowman so we can put them on whatever angle now i normally put this in the pillar drill just to a little hole and a sort of little jaunty angle and a hole up through there as well and then you can put a little bit of down in just to keep it fixed in alternatively a little bit of epoxy underneath there will do the job as well but let's just tidy up that end so we're going to change chucks for this chuck on there then this is this is a chuck that or the jaw set rather that I use for all small pieces okay now do be careful this is this is a very old jaw we we still sell them now but as an aluminium alternative um, this is something that I've been using for around about 35 years it's a, a really great way of holding small pieces however there are alternatives out there and if you're worried about it and um, you think you might hurt yourself go for these these are pin jaws Sorry, these are pin jewels. Um, they will do the same job, um, but they're a little bit more covered, less likely to catch your fingernails or knuckles. Okay, so pin jewels would be a great alternative to these jewels here, which are known as step jewels. Okay, so let's. I'm banking on this being small enough to grip inside. And with a very, very gentle expansion. You've seen me do things like this before. Remember what we do, we stop just before we hear the first crack. Just before, don't wait until you hear the crack, just stop a fraction before. And then we'll use a little spindle gouge just to clean that surface up. Can't take big cuts. You can't. You can't take big cuts here because your hat will come out. No one saw that. Hopefully, happened so quickly. Don't then be tempted to over tighten it beyond that first crack. Right. So let's just do one more of those. Just tidy that up, and then we'll give it another little sand. Do those pin jaws or spigot jaws come in at 80 mil? No, they don't. No, they don't. Oh, well, the tools are disappearing. Where are the tools going? I've got an empty rack up there. Um, right, okay, let's carry on. Sorry. Um, quick bit of extraction. <laughs> Fifteen to forty.
600. Sawtooth bits are chisel tips, they're designed to be used on end grain. If you use them on side grain, what tends to happen is they, they can burr the beginning of the cut. Um, Forstner bits have a knife edge, they have a, a good clean entry into side grain. The trouble is they're not a chisel tip, so when it comes to end grain you get a little bit more heat and burning occur if you use them for, for end grain. So it's really Forstner bits for side, sawtooth bits for end grain. The wave bit of a Forstner bit is just, just the pattern um, of the Forstner bit. So it's the, you had literally have a little wave on the knife edge. Um, it still doesn't make them massively good for, for end grain. Bit of friction polish here now. Again, we'll apply without the lathe running and then buff to a, a good finish. And that'll be the hat done. So a little bit of friction polish. You normally where something comes off the lathe and it ends up going down the dust extraction, so just be aware of that. And is there an alternative to the pin jaw for 80 mil chest? For 80 mil, well, I've been racking my brain since you asked that question as to which, what would be the alternative. Um, there's a small O'Donnell set, but they don't close to zero. Um, ben, have you got any ideas? What have we got for the 80 that might work? No, the pin jaws are for the hundreds as well, aren't they? Um, yeah. We'll have to have a check and we'll get back to you on that. Yeah, Tom, if you can just make a note of that question and the email address, we'll answer that and uh, we'll, we'll have a look, we'll do some research and come back to you. There we are, there's the hat. So we need a nose, we need a carrot. Um, so we're going to use a bit of Paduk. Paduk is probably one of the most colourful timbers that uh, we've got in our arsenal. So, same jaw. Um, I used to make a lot of lace bobbins in the, with this method. So the lace bobbin, or the Midland lace bobbin that I was used to making, and here's one out of, out of Paduk actually, um, it looks like that. And so using the tailstock to support, um, you're creating these shapes. This is for the ladies, or men, that uh, make lace, um, and they had hundreds of these on their pillow, uh, weighed down by beads, which were called spangles, and um, the lace, or the thread, wound around here to create the lace. This is exactly the same method of working. Um, so we're going to hold our piece of timber right the way through it, through the, the lathe there. I'm going to make a little nose. What I'm going to do, that's a bit long. At the moment, I've got quite long corners on here, so I can't fit it all the way up through the lathe. So let me just use the chuck as a, as a vice. I'm just going to cut a little bit off the end. In fact, no, let me cut it halfway, then I can use both, both halves. Let me go just quickly to one of my... Um, pull saws just to take a little bit of that off we'll use that for for other things later on and then we'll turn a, a carrot all those years at school it enabled me to stand in front of you and turn carrots there we are, so we're going to use a drill bit to fix this to the head and we're going to use this one, this is, so this is a 3 mil drill bit, so I need to size a little tenon on this carrot as well. Okay, so that's going to be my guide in a moment, so let's go with a skew, might as well start the skew from start to finish. Nice and quick, 2000 plus, so I'm 2300 there. Rough down to the diameter you need, if you want. Is there any advantage of using the cylinder cylinder jaw over the O'Donnells? Um, uh, yes, yeah, so the cylinder jaw was designed by, it was an idea from um, uh, Stuart Batter. He made, made lots of 
uh, long stem goblets. He needs something that held a, a, a long um, distance um, whilst turning a very long um, piece. So that was the idea of the synergy rules. The, the actual business end, the, the dovetail, is the same um, diameter all the way up. I find that the, um, the O'Donnell jaws a little bit nicer for the, for the work I do because there's a lot of body down at the bottom um, to, uh, sort of coning down to this lovely um, sort of smaller um, gripping area so it means that I've got a lot of strength there but for a fairly small jaw and I, um, I prefer that I do a lot of bowls with this particular set this is the 38 I think it is listed as um, or the 112 one and a half inch um, so for me I, I do prefer the O'Donnell's it's just a, my style of work prefer you know it, I prefer that um, and a lot of the jaws are the same you have to you have to think about your style of work to decide what jaws you're going to go with so you know the Stuart the cylinder jaws were the ones that he would go go with it's his, his sort of project needed it now that will be a supermarket carrot, not a homegrown carrot because it's straight. Okay, but we'll live with that. We'll make do. I need a party. My party tool keeps disappearing. Um, someone asked me the other day if I use all the tools in the tool rack. Well, this is your answer. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going through war today. So we're going to size that one. The, drill bit. There we are. Now I won't bother with the industrial extraction. We'll start a 240 grit abrasive. A bit of friction polish. Then we'll part that one off. All right, so we have a little current nose. We may as well drill our snowman and put that nose there straight away actually so if I just take that one out we're then moving on to bits of coal so drill bit drill bit goes in the chuck I'm not going to have my hands anywhere near this drill bit so don't worry nice stubby little drill bit hands well out the way okay so then my hands are completely out of the way I'm gonna in a small hole. Worst thing you can do when you're drilling holes with a drill bit in the chuck is use your blunt drills because then you have to press hard and you're going to slip. Whenever you start pressing hard you're going to slip. There we are, our snowman has a nose. Um, I'll put the hat on, he has a hat as well. We'll get in there. We'll get in there. Nice little paduk nose, sycamore body with a walnut hat. Okay, so let's. I'm just going to show you now the one that we've already made. So I'm not going to do all of these buttons and uh, eyes and uh, mouth. Once you've seen one or two of these, that'll be enough. You get the idea. Um, these just stick on. I'm not going to mess around with tenons and holes and things like that. Just stick them where you want them. And then over the top of, uh, of that, or you can give them a little bit of friction polish before you part them off, whatever. Um, but that's all that's uh, all that's required. So let's make a few bits of coal. Um, panga panga. So panga panga is a beautiful tin. Reminds me a lot. I don't know whether it's the same material actually. But it reminds me a lot of wenge or wenge. Um, a very similar look. 
for anything dark or if you don't have anything dark then just dye it you know use stain um, use an ebony stain or a very dark um, Victorian oak stain you know that sort of thing don't go too big on these these pieces A little bit of a side scrape from that lovely skew. A little parting tool. I'm going to go with a, a very fine, very fine parting tool here. I'm not going to go all the way through just yet. This is a two mil parting tool. There we are. You could sand that if you want to. I won't bother. I'm just going to go straight on with this, the friction polish. Just to darken it, really. That's the only reason. Yeah. Of course, if you're using your airbrushes already, why not use some um, black stain? That'd be perfect. Or ebonizing lacquer, you know? And then... Part that one off. Our first little lump of gold. Now, there is a little bit of... A little bit of waste on the back just use a little um, a scalpel blade or carving knife um, hold it in a set of pliers something like that soft jaw pliers um, just to take that little bit off or just pop it flat on a desk um, on some abrasive and just run it up and down just to take that away and then they can be glued on to your figure okay we'll do another one or two of those in a minute just to show you how quick and easy they are so we'll just scrape around little bit of friction polish all right another one so let's just do another another one just for actual timings so scrape around friction polish part off next one so you know they're not long to do they don't take long there's three down there probably in less than a minute okay so really 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 quick okay right then well let's uh, pet the Ben, if you pan back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So there we are. So, one last project for this year. What an interesting year we've had together. It started in March. I don't know how many projects we've done. Somebody um, back there in the office, I'm sure, will be adding up numbers of, of projects and demonstrations and things like that. It's been hours and hours and hours of, of live stuff that I've shared with you. We've had a We've built up a lovely community, which we're going to carry on going forward. Um, I just wanted to, again, publicly say thank you to Finley, Charlie and Vicky for helping so, so much. And all the guys back at head office, Lily and Tom and, and there are other guys at the Skill Centre. Now, don't forget, as from, we're looking, I think it's the 12th of, of January. Join us then because this, that's going to be the first of many demonstrations, more than one a week. And they're going to be live. They're going to be questions. So think of all those questions. So guys, until I see you in January, have a fantastic Christmas. Um, have a wonderful time. Thank you for all your support and for joining us. So see you next year. Have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Where's my camera?